New York knows a thing or two about congestion. With more than eight and a half million people, there's a constant crush of pedestrians, cyclists, and cars. But here's the thing. While many North American cities are seeing a rise in pedestrian and cycling deaths, New York is bucking the trend. It's seen a remarkable turnaround in the last four years, and it didn't happen by accident. So how did they do it? New York officials went all in on Vision Zero, and they're getting results. Let's break down what New York did by looking at five major changes, beginning with road redesign. once known as the Boulevard of Death because of the number of cyclists and pedestrians killed or injured here. Since it's redesigned though, it's become the poster child for Vision Zero because that number of deaths has gone down to zero. Lanes here were narrowed and traffic flow was at times redirected. Bike lanes were also installed, but in the center, away from parked cars and buses. Crosswalks were also shortened by widening the medians. It's a walking city. You don't need a car in order to have you know, a really active life here. Julia Kite is with New York City's Department of Transportation. If we could fix Queens Boulevard, if we could bring it from you know, the boulevard of death to a place where people want to walk and want to bike, then really nothing is impossible. And that's really she says the key to making Vision Zero a success is operating with the actual goal of zero deaths. There's no reason to accept is just the cost of doing business or the status quo, the fact that people are going to get hit and killed or injured in traffic. It's a way of realizing that we can engineer out the consequences of human error. And while we can never completely eliminate people making mistakes, we can make sure that those mistakes don't have catastrophic consequences. Take the engineering behind crosswalks like this. The priority is the safety of those on foot, Pedestrians get the green light first and a head start on turning cars. Another major part of road redesign here is an emphasis on bike lanes. Cycling is a major piece of New York's success. A quick look at their bike share program tells the story. With the number of cyclists dramatically increasing in recent years, the city has had to work to make space for them. But officials say there's no one magic bullet. It's a combination of things, and that includes traffic enforcement. The city increased the number of traffic tickets issued by nearly 40%. Does that make a difference? CBC crunched the numbers and discovered that in Toronto, as the number of traffic tickets declined, the number of cyclists and pedestrian fatalities increased. A major part of Vision Zero here is also controlling speed. Default speed limits were reduced to 25 miles per hour, or about 40 kilometers, and they put in more oversight. One of the tools to control speed are these cameras, which can be found in school zones across the city. Now, the data shows that they've cut speeding during school hours by more than half, and injuries have gone down too. The evidence shows that even just the difference between being hit at 30 miles per hour versus being hit at 25 miles per hour makes a tremendous difference in a pedestrian's odds of surviving. But despite the success, the speed cameras went dark this summer, the victim of a battle between lawmakers, a sign that the kind of change needed for Vision Zero takes a lot of political will. Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, campaigned on Vision Zero. When we lowered the speed limit, a lot of people said the sky would fall. Well, it didn't. Most New Yorkers recognized it was making people safer. And I certainly heard the grumbling from a lot of drivers, and I respect that. But I also heard a lot of people, including drivers, say, you know what, I don't love it, but it works. 
Projects like this don't always go smoothly. There's usually opposition, and New York is no different in that respect. But because of the political will behind Vision Zero, work like this often goes ahead anyway. New Yorkers have also had to learn that they may not all get their way. Headlines reflect a recent battle over the elimination of parking for bike lanes. When the community board voted against bike lanes, the mayor stepped in and overruled them. A small win to safety advocates like Evan Weiss. These bike lanes are tiny slivers in a city that's just crisscrossed with parkways, expressways, parking lots, parking garages, everything. Evan Weiss writes a cycling blog. He says part of the challenge of making Vision Zero work is bringing voices of change together. The silent majority of people everywhere want to be safe. They want to get around without being run over. And uh, uh, the hard part is getting people together to, to help push the, the, the changes that, that, that will make that happen. But constructing change comes with a price, and New Yorkers have had to pony up. For all its success and flaws, Eben Weiss says New York can offer a vision of what's possible. It takes somebody to open your eyes to how far you ha we have to go and how much better things can be and how much effort that actually takes to kind of turn that switch on in people and say, I'm going to do something about it. Make no mistake, Vision Zero is very much a work in progress here. It's hotly debated and always controversial but the results speak for themselves. The last time New York City streets were this safe, people were getting around with a horse and buggy. So in the entire era of the automobile, we're at the safest point we've ever been. Of course, drivers, pedestrians, and cyclists will always have strong opinions. The difference in New York City, they're not letting that get in the way, and they're not standing still. As the death toll has increased for Toronto pedestrians, so has the pressure on politicians. Any death on Toronto streets is absolutely unacceptable. No one should lose their lives in this way. Last month, the City Council approved an additional $21 million to beef up some Vision Zero initiatives, including one that's worked in New York. Remember how pedestrians and cyclists get a head start to cross the street? Toronto will now roll that out at 80 intersections identified as being potentially more hazardous. Speed limit in Cambridge has been lowered to 25 miles per hour. That speed limit is citywide except in locations where it's otherwise posted. This is part of the city's commitment to Vision Zero, keeping residents, workers, and anybody else traveling through the city of Cambridge safe and comfortable on their journeys. Traveling at a lower speed is the single greatest measure you can take as a driver to keep everybody on our roadway safe. A surprising fact is that a vehicle traveling at 30 miles per hour carries 50% more energy than a vehicle traveling at 25 miles per hour, which has a big impact on the outcome of a crash for somebody on a bicycle, a pedestrian, or even somebody in another car. For more information, please visit the City of Cambridge Vision Zero website.